Hello, everybody. My name is Lewis Lee, and this is Playing in Traffic. We do this every Thursday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And please share this on Facebook, YouTube. It's all live. Share it with your friends. Let them know what we're doing. We got a special guest, one of our favorite guests, Mike Ring from Ring Brothers. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. I'm kind of... Uh... When you said favorite guest, that's that means a lot. That's pretty oh, cool. Oh man, yeah. I mean, you want to you you the guy. <laughs> I would uh, say your brother too, but he is the second time he hasn't came to hang out with us. Yeah, so. no, he's down in Texas. I don't know what's going on. It's been two yeah. times now, but that's I'm good with doing. just being with you, Lewis. <laughs> yeah, we we enjoy you coming on, and um, we got a lot of good response from the last time you came on. People well, love. Good. You hearing your stories and, and about your cars. Um, and this year, you really pumped out some stuff this year. Yeah, we had, a, again, we thought, oh, after 22 and bringing Enyo and the Camaro and the Mustang and the Blazer, we thought, oh, you know, 23 would be easy. But, you know, then we ended up bringing, bringing uh, the Charger and... Um, the Rolls Mustang Royce. and the Rolls Royce. It's like, yeah. so yeah, it's like, we think we're going to take it easy and then we bring three more. Well, I I know that you're an artist. So uh, fluids come out when you're, when you're looking at something. So I know it's hard to slow down. Yeah, it is. You know, you're always thinking, I get up in the middle of the night and think about what we need to do. And, you know, that's, that's where we're at. <clears throat> With this blazer we're doing now it's like okay i got to get all this done because we got invited to new zealand and australia to do a motor x which is a car show over in australia yeah. so we're leaving in like two weeks they're gonna fly us over to australia so oh, nice that's a bucket list that gonna be pretty okay. neat so are you taking a car too or well we are Originally gonna have Greg Murphy is a car. Um, what was the name of that car, hon? Captive. Captive. We did a yellow Charger, mm -hmm. and he's from New Zealand, and he was gonna send it to Australia to the show, but didn't work out. So no, we're just gonna go and check out that car culture there and see how it goes. That's gonna be nice. Yeah, we're pretty excited. Now I've heard you shouldn't mess with the kangaroos. Yeah, that's what I hear. They can punch hard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or kick, whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Ray, what what are you thinking, Ray? Got you know what? What what do you? What's the thing? What's to say? Uh, I I missed the last show uh, when Mike was on, and I regretted that. I guess I was away. And uh, <laughs> so it's a pleasure to, to to meet you, Mike, and be with you. I've seen Thanks, uh, Ray. I've seen some of your stuff up at the Syracuse Nationals a number of years ago when I was there. Go ahead. And um, I actually brought home some ideas, you know, and said, wow, oh, good. you know, because I, I think and you know, the crowd around the, the crowd that was around the car every minute of the day, I think everybody was doing the same thing. Um, but as you know, I mean, it's, it's great. Um, and I and and I and I was speaking, I think, with your brother at the event. And um, the good thing is it was like open, open. It was an open book, total disclosure. And and I've always said. People have asked me, boy, how do you do what you do? You know, can you teach me? I'll show you whatever I I'll show you whatever I can. I'll show you everything. I said, <clears throat> the reality is everybody has their ability, and we all can't do what everybody else does. You know, so you know, I, I could I could probably you know work under you guys for a year and still not be able to do what you do. So, but I like the fact that you guys will actually explain what you do and how you do it to people you know, just in case. So. Yeah. And I think that's such a great point, Ray, is that, you know, people sometimes think, oh, you're going to give up your secrets. You're going to do this or that, but it's like, you're right. They don't have your mind. So even if you gave right. two people the same car with a drawing, they're going to interpret that drawing in a different way because it's just what comes out of you personally. So by telling people your secrets or whatever you think they're secrets, because they're really not, you're not the first person to do anything. Yeah. So I'm with you, Ray. You just tell them what, you, tell them everything, 
and let them interpret whatever the ideas you have and how they can do it. And it, it's, it's all good. I mean, it's just making us all better. There's, you shouldn't have to hide things from people. Yeah. To I think agree. that you to think you're going to make yours, you know, look better than the rest. Cause you're not going to tell them the secret. Smart guys are going to figure it out. And then they're going to be upset with you because you didn't tell them and they asked yeah. you straight up. So you're better off just telling them. Yeah. The, yeah, the best my mom, my mom hollers at me because I, I'll do videos showing people how to do leather stuff, and she's like, "No, no, they're gonna steal your ideas." Like, mom, there's statistics that show that only like 15 percent of people will actually do it. So, it's so true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, be open. It just makes you, you know, it just it, it it's, makes you it's real. a better world. You know, and the thing is, I, I, I've worked with a, a bunch of younger guys, and I've shown them a lot of things that they just had no idea that because they weren't alive, you know, with sure. the old cars. And then I've had a great amount of pleasure in sitting back and watching them with their take on what I showed them, you know, because people will always find another way or, you know, they say, hey, let me see that shortcut. How do you do that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, that's the beauty, I think. You, you put it out there and see what comes back. Yeah, because you can learn it from them. You know what I mean? Right. It's like you thought you knew what you were doing, and then somebody in two seconds does something that's like, shit, why didn't I think of that? I've been really? doing it the same way for 30 years. and These guys, really? I showed them one little thing, and they made it easier than what I've been doing. Absolutely. You know, um, I watch a lot of videos of, uh, like, bus builders. And I'll even watch the worst guy ever because he'll do one thing that I'm like, oh wow, yeah, I never thought of that. So I watch good and bad because you, just one thing you catch. Yeah, yeah. I've always told if I owned uh, like a, uh, a big, um, how would I say, like, uh, <clears throat> God, I'm kind of lost for words. If you were, if you had a a plant where you had, they said you should hire like the laziest guy to do something in the plant. Cause he'll figure out a way to jury <laughs> yeah. rig something to make Don't it easier. It. And then you build on that and then you put him in a different position because some of the guys that are lazy figure out an easy way to do things. And yeah, that's the way it should be. Yeah. You just have to have one in the shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got about four in the shop though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny so how's the shop going are you guys I, I noticed you got a lot of a lot of new people yeah i mean we lost sean who was a pretty tough loss he ended up moving to utah but um other than that we've hired a couple guys to replace him you never replace people you just kind of fill yeah. in but you know the older you get the more you are, uh, Ray can probably attest to it. It's like, you know, you always think you're not going to be able to do without a certain person. So for all these shops out there that think, oh, if they lose this guy or whatever, it'll always work out. You know what I mean? And you always almost, it almost turns out to be better. And you'd say, I can't do without this person. I'll never make it. And then, for some reason, it just it just works out, and sometimes for the best, and most of the time for the best, because we've all had employees over the years, and we've all moved on, and we still keep doing what we do. And um, yeah, we've got some new guys that actually is a lot of fun and keep me young, yeah, yeah. younger. Yeah. yeah. So new help is awesome, and. And some guys we got now are super talented. What type of a process do you go through to try to vet out and, and when, when you hire people? What do you what's the process a, a new prospective employee has to go through? Yeah, that's a great crest question, Ray. I, I think a lot of it is if they're just there for the money and you know what what the pay is gonna be that pretty much stops it there. But if they're there 
to talk about what they can learn or what they can bring to the table. And mm -hmm. I think that's what I really look at is, um, you know, I, I get the opportunity and where they can go and, and make money because we all know they need to make money to be with us. But if the first questions are about money and benefits and all that, instead of um, just being excited about what we do. Um, so I think we look for more of the people that just talk about being excited about the types of builds we have and because the money will come. I mean, we're finally getting paid yeah. um, enough to pay employees a decent wage. I'm not saying that if you're a great welder, you couldn't make more out in the real world, but um, we still have a lot of fun and can create things that you're not going to have the opportunity to do. So it's, uh, it's all about, what their priorities are, I guess, right? Yeah, when they, when they first, when their first questions are, you know, how much time off do I get? How much am I going to make? And, <laughs> yeah. and what time is lunch? You know, you know exactly. I, yeah. A few of my close friends are small business owners here where I live, and I talk with them regularly. And one guy is a real, he's a hard ass. He owns a transmission shop, and he's just been in business too long to take any crap. And, you know, he'll have a guy lined up for an interview, a younger guy, and um, he may be coming from 30, 40 miles away. And, you know, they set it up. Okay, you'll be here. I'm here. At, you know, I'm at the shop at 630, 7 a.m. You know, be here at 9. And he'll <laughs> call or a text at like 845. Dude, I'm running late. You know, I need to <laughs> Click. Like, you, know, you might as well just turn around and go home. You just you missed your interview. Well, what do you mean? I, I texted you to let you know. It's like, yeah, you let me know. Thanks. Goodbye. If you can't mm -hmm. make the interview on time, how, how are you going to be at work? You know? Yeah. And he's just brutally honest like that because he knows, you know, this guy is going to be probably going to be a problem if he can't get up to the interview. But <clears throat> I think I think that's with age and getting a little close to retirement. Um, you can call that when you're younger and you have a shop, you feel like you can't do without the people. So you put up with that a little more, but you're right. I think get a little age on you and you're like, sorry, yeah, I'm and, and that, not ruling to deal with that. That guy and but, um, that age. there's two shops. That guy's shop and my other friend has a motorcycle shop and they're both in the same boat where the majority of their mechanics are all over 60. They all kind of came up together and and, and the one guy with the training shop says, you know, he's been investing more in better equipment so the guys don't have to work as hard. He goes, because these guys can fall and break a bone. He's thinking, he's like, <laughs> and this guy's like, you know, you're not bound, you're not going to get cast up and bounce back Monday like when you were 20. This guy's right. going to be out probably forever. So he's investing more in safety and and uh, things like that. And he, he says, because I got to keep these guys, I got I got to keep them working until I can't work anymore. And and he can't replace them. He's tried. He's always trying to get a, a new flow of guys through the shop. And, you know, he just, people, the younger guys just don't want to do it, you know. No. Or they come in and they don't have tools. And he's like, well, you know, where are your tools? Oh, I figured there were tools here for me to use. Listen, yeah. I use a transmission rebuild. You're going to teach me and you're going to give me the tools. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's no, such... that's, it's not the way it works. You know? No, it's it's so funny you talk about that because it's it's so true. But the older guys, I mean, I look at our shop. We do have, you know, I'm 61, Jim 60, soon to be 62, Mark 62, yeah. Rick 60, you know. But, you know, it's not like any of us are looking to retire. Right. We're not like we're not like Lewis. That's you know. Well, I'll go right. you're lucky I'll, enough to be able to retire. You I'll know? go you one better because the boat that I'm in, I happen, you know, I, I was working in this uh, uh, a college, a school system for a long time. I did retire a couple of years ago. Wow. You know, so and I'm 65, but I still work at a shop, you know, and I still do another job. I do cars, like when you said Rolls Royce. I just inspected a Rolls Royce two weeks ago. It was pretty wow. funny. Yeah. So. I didn't stop. I just, you know, I stopped them. I just stopped the main thing so I can, I'm basically getting paid to, to be home if I want to be. But, right. you know, I think 
a lot of people of our generation and mentality, you know, when we're just not ready to mentally, we're not, I know I'm not ready to say mm -hmm. maybe it's time to, but I think of the guys who were our age when I was a kid, when we were kids, what were those guys doing? They were sitting on the porch, drinking a beer or reading a paper and like going to bed at eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> We've changed. Yeah. We've definitely have changed. Generally. Yeah. You know, that's what everybody says about the ring brothers. What's your exit plan? I'm like, yeah. Probably when I'm laying on the floor here, dead, you know, it's like, I don't want, I mean, I have a job that people want to do when they retire and yeah. go to the shop and hang around. And exactly, you know, I'm lucky enough to have the girls run the place basically. And I can go back and work and hang out with the guys. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. Because like I said, that's that's what I, you know, I started doing it a number of years ago. But in retirement, I'm still working at the shop because that's what I've always liked to do. You know, I like to right. try to I like to build. I like to create. So, you know. It's, uh, yeah, there's some about getting up in the morning and, you know, and having a purpose in life. You know, I, I can't imagine where you just get up and there's no purpose, you know. It, you know, we all have an ego. We we don't have to talk about our egos or, you know, brag about our egos or anything like that. But we all have an inner ego that is a good thing that makes you get up and want to create, beat, you know, try to build something better than the other guy. Not better, but cooler or be still relevant and... I can't imagine just giving it all up and walking away and not be relevant in life. It's, it's, it would be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that from what I see, the younger, a lot of the younger generations, the guys and girls don't have, they they'll just, and I've seen it with my own kids, friends and all my kids are, are sure. saying, oh, they're grounded. They have good jobs and they, they are on the right path, but I have seen it with their friends where they'll just, They'll get tired of something and just toss it and say, okay, I'm just going to go do something else. Well, wait a minute. That's what you went to school for. You know, like, what do you, what do you do? Oh, no, I just yeah. got to go do something else. I, I had enough. That's yeah. Like, really? And, I, and I've and i mentioned that, I think, at SEMA a year or two ago. And I think our generation was lucky enough that most of us didn't have anything. So right. we got, right. we got, we didn't have we didn't have material things that we had to maintain, not like what we gave our kids and whatever, right? We, right. we didn't have anything. Yeah. So any job gave us things to buy, whatever, but we didn't have to live a certain lifestyle right. because we needed to make 200 grand a year because we needed this house or that. We didn't have anything. Right. So we were lucky enough to have, to take jobs that paid the bills. And I was lucky enough to one that, I really enjoy to do that never intended to be any more than just something I love to do. But like my kids, you know, in a way they've, I've spoiled them in a way that they've got to make enough money to maintain a lifestyle that right. they've had. And I didn't really have a lifestyle. You Not know right. what I mean? It was like, so it's pretty cool. We were in a generation is even though we were all poor, we didn't know it. And you know, we, we were take blessed. It, yeah, we were well, blessed what? because our parents were post World War II, post Depression era people. Yeah, and that's where I learned to skimp and save. You know, um, so like you said, having nothing, I can still think of my first go kart. You know, two by fours, nails. Sure, and exactly. Piece of rope. Same thing, and, and you put worked. your foot, you put your foot on the front two by four to make right. it turn. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and you had to have some innovation. Obviously, it was a simple machine, but you still had to have some some way. Yeah. To, you had to figure out how to hold the axle in place and how to pivot that two by four. You know, I yeah. think I still have scars from those nails. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You never, you never could find the right size nail. You always get the long ones. Right. Yeah, I know. It's like, but then you'd sit yeah, there, straighten the nail the right with the hammer thing. on the ground. You know, straighten them Hell, out and reuse them. Yeah, hit the nail and try to straighten it out. Hell, right. we could. We had a hell of a time finding a, a lawnmower that had a shaft going out side the side instead of the bottom. And I'll now tell you, it's always screwing us up. I mean, this is where the hoarder mentality comes through. I've been bitten by that. I have three of those side shaft Briggs engines in my. <laughs> I will. I'll never use them. Never get rid of them. Yeah, All because right. you, 
You knew they were gold as a kid. I would actually like to get rid of them. I'd like to see them go to somebody who would <laughs> use them, you know. But now everybody goes to Harbor Freight and they buy Chinese, you know, 12 yeah. power motor. You know, these are three <laughs> and a half and five horsepower motors. Nobody wants them. Oh, that's you know? funny. I remember, uh, I can remember going into some, a neighbor's garage and I can still remember what it smelled like back in like in the late 60s it had that old musty smell and as soon as you open that the gas tank it was varnished oh, yeah. I, you know i mean you never forget that those things that sensory input. yeah and then for some reason that hooked some of us and other yeah. people weren't blessed with what we had you know right yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, the holy grail of the shaft coming out the side. Yeah, side shaft. <laughs> I mean, you know, and and I and I tell you the truth because I've told younger guys about this. I'm actually I feel fortunate to remember using those lawnmowers and seeing them work with that big damn rotary blade. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, and it wasn't in a horror movie. It was on the you know on on the lawn. That was a hell of a machine, man. Yeah, it really was. That was uh yeah, that was a kicking device. But, so uh, Mike, let's uh, yeah. talk about the push rod. That is a beast. The what? Your the green uh is it called the push rod? Enyo? Oh, that's what it's the, Enyo? The, the truck or yeah, the, yeah. yeah, that we we had it out today. We picked it up again, but yeah, that thing's a uh, thing's crazy. It's uh you know that Chevy truck that we pretty much scratch built and a uh, thousand horsepower normally aspirated. <clears throat> it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it sounds, sounds as mean as, is is what it is. So, yeah. I'll tell you who's ever doing your social media. They're doing a great job. The, the video and, and the, the whole, just the whole package is pretty tough. Yeah, that's Khan. Yeah, and my daughter was in that when we first started it. She was the one that pulled because I started it up without taking the tape off the intake there off the carburetor. So she was pulling the tape off. But yeah, that was my daughter. So yeah, it's uh, hard to believe that's been a few years already. But now we're we're doing an Aston Martin, which to wow. me is going to be. I'm super excited, you know, kind of like that truck was. It's like mm -hmm. kind of a scratch-built 71 Aston Martin DBS, which I know nothing about. Mm -hmm. I just knew, you know, it's kind of fun to do a European car where you've never seen one before mm -hmm. and you can say, I don't like this, I don't like that, let's change this or that, you know, because – when you do so many Mustangs, Camaros, Chargers, whatever, it's a fine line. You're always walking, you know, what, what do we do to change it and not ruin it? But for a European car, which you've never seen, at least I hadn't, mm -hmm. um, it's easy to say, I don't like this. I don't like that. I mean, I don't care about the purists. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't care about anybody, but it's like what your mind tells you is not cool about the car. I was going to yeah. say the best place to be is, a non-purist yeah because it's a it's a blank sheet yeah, canvas it yeah. just has a form and everything is open to change yeah right no it's okay. a db5 lewis that's db5 oh, is it? this, is, yeah, yeah, this is like um i don't know if you saw the last james bond movie where he was killed on the island yeah he started out in like a DB something, the older version, the silver DB5. car. Is that what that is? Yeah, the DB5, right. And That's then when he was driving away to the island, he was in the newer version, which was the DBS. Yeah. And uh, they also used a Vanquish, too. There was a Vanquish, too. Yeah. I mean, I know in one of the movies, yeah. But. Which one? In that one, he was driving, and that's the only time I'd seen this car. But it's very flat-sided, kind of boring, but kind of looks like a Mustang. Very wide, but very short. But we're even widening it like 10 inches in the rear from the stock, really putting some hips on it. Um, it's going to be 82 inches wide in the rear, which is super wow. wide. Yeah. 78 inches in the front. Uh, 49 inches tall at right height. So it's 
short and squatty and I'm super excited. So it'll be another year. We've been on it for a year and a half already, yeah. but uh, pretty, pretty excited about that car. Mm. Yeah. Plus we're doing a, a CUDA for, a, <clears throat> you know, future, the rapper, mm -hmm. his uh, manager, George, who was his cousin, who's an awesome guy. Um, but it's pink. So it, we're pretty excited about that car too. So we're doing that. We're doing another Blazer K5, um, a Grand National, another Mustang 69. Am I missing anything on? The Brian car. Yeah. yeah. I did add the Grand National in there. Yeah. So we, you know, as many as that sounds, that's it though. You know, we, yeah. There's some shops that got 30 plus cars in them. Yeah. We barely built 50 cars in all our years. So how does a guy with two employees, four employees have 30 cars in a shop as a customer? I'd be saying, how the hell are you ever going to get that done? Yeah. You're waiting forever. I think these, this day in this day and age as a customer, you're just happy that it's in a shop somewhere, <laughs> you know, cause I know a lot of guys, that have gotten burned and caused us an outside waiting in queue and oh, wow. it's going to be years. So just to well, have, we, yeah, we don't even take, you know, if I can't get somebody in within six months, I won't even entertain it because these shops, I mean, no offense. I mean, I think they all think that they got to take every job, right? You got to take it and get it in. But, Say you're sitting on a car for two years and you quoted the guy 70 bucks an hour. Now your rate's 90 bucks an hour. Whose right. car are you going to work on? Right. So that, car, that car at 70 bucks an hour is probably never going to get any love. And then all of a sudden it's two more years later and you're 100 bucks an hour, 110 bucks an hour. You got a contract. So then you hope the guy pulls the car. It's just... That's a game. We all know. We all know it's you got to do right because you can taint these people and they're never going to want to do something again because they've got burned or. Mm -hmm. And I don't think most shops. I don't think they intentionally do anything wrong. I just think they get caught up and. Yeah, don't want to turn Peter to the Rob Rob Peter to pay Paul sometimes and so you know in, in a lot of shops. Like some of these shops that have a lot of cars in it, they're bolt-on guys. They're not custom, you know. They're not. They're not the Ring Brothers. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hopefully, they're better. <laughs> oh. They're they're bolt-on guys. Yeah, and that's okay. That's a good market, you know. That sometimes I wish I was a bolt-on guy because there's money to be made there. You know, if you've got talent to bolt-on parts and give people even a unique car. In that way, it's it's okay too. Yeah. But but don't fill your shop with taking every car because you're worried you're gonna miss out. I mean, I think that's young man thinking where you think you need every job out there. Can you um, uh, the camera pick this up? This is this is a local shop that I just I went can't to. See. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, it's hard to see, right? I can see it. All right. Oh, yeah. 150 bucks. Yep. Oh, so my God. Mechanical, 165. Oh, my God. Yes. Welcome to New York. Wow. <laughs> Bro, uh, well, we, built, we built that charger from a guy from New York. I hope he's on tonight to see what people charge in New York because yeah. he didn't get charged near that. Uh, Louis, is, do we have, is Brian in the queue? He's got, I know he's got. Yes. No questions for Mike, and he's got. I think he's got a lot. He can add a lot to this conversation. Okay, yeah, we'll get him in. Yeah, this is the stuff we talk about. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, Brian, been a while. Yeah, yeah. it's been well, since the last time. It's great seeing yeah. you again. Good hey, you were talking you. when you were talking about uh, you know uh, <coughs> about the experience and you know showing somebody. It used to, it would aggravate me. I was a, a technician before selling tools and you'd get somebody and you would try, you'd like bang your head against the wall. Cause you're like, 
dude, why can't you learn to do this? I mean, you know, cause some people just don't have that talent or that know-how, you know, and then some people just make it look real easy, you know? So that's why. Right. And it's funny because I had a, a customer of mine, a very knowledgeable guy, older guy. He was a little bit older than me. Uh, and, uh, but very knowledgeable. And I, I told him one time, I said, man, I wish I was growing up uh, and I would have loved to learn under you, you know, your experience. And he was just a cranky old son of a bitch, you know? <laughs> and he's like, I would have never told you anything anyway, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, one day he had a heart attack and he, they were lucky enough to find him. He was riding his bike and somebody found him laying in a ditch and called 911. Mm -hmm. And when the next week or you know, two weeks later or whatever it was when he was in the shop, he's over there and he had three or four young guys and he was showing how to use the meter <laughs> and how to do this. And I was like, Hey, you know, what happened here? And he's like, I don't know, man, just something about not being able to show somebody or pass the knowledge that we have. Cause we're all like little time capsules. Yep. And when somebody's gone, that information's yep. never there again. And we talked about this with Chassis John. We had a good guy oh, on the fine. show. And the stuff that you learn, and you might click with somebody, but, uh, you know, you don't have to ever really worry about somebody being you because you wow. are you, you know? Right. So. And, I, yeah, that's so true, Brian. It's like you're just you, and you don't have to worry. I mean, I think we all – it's, it's again about being young and yeah. worried that, you know, this is your trade and this is what you do. And you, you think you're, you're the only one that's going to get this job. And if you tell somebody it, you're going to get, you're going to lose out. But when you get older, you, you kind of, we had an interior guy like that, but he ended up passing away. But even for us, it's like, we would go to a shop and he would just put down whatever he was doing. He would never show anything yeah. and he went to the grave being an amazing seamstress and never showed anybody his trade yeah yeah and it's sad because that's if i could start over i think i might get in the interior industry because i think that's an unappreciated i mean let's face it if you can work with your hands today with this ai coming out it's going to take care of the accountants it's going to wipe out Everybody except the guys, the plumbers, the electricians, can use their hands. the guys working with their hands. Yeah, that's right. You know, the only ones that are in trouble are the ones that told us when we were in school, you're going to be a ditch digger if you don't go to college. <laughs> I never went to college, right? I, right. Didn't, I didn't do any. I went in the Navy. But uh, that's if for everything they told us in high school, we're going to be worthless. Well, the worthless guys are going to be the guys making bank yeah. because the AI is going to be taking the jobs of the yeah. guys. That well, that's that's kind of how it always was. I mean, I remember being a teenager uh -huh. and I was always pretty good. I had steady jobs, but I had friends who would just they'd be working at a gas station and quit on a Friday. Then they'd be at a deli by Monday and then they are going to be somewhere else, a machine shop or they're doing woodwork the next week. And they would just change jobs and. And I told my kids this. I said, you know, that's the thing. And so they said, well, dad, but what was the whole thing about going to school? I said, no, that's for you. You're going to school. I said, no, yeah. we <laughs> all, I said, all of my friends, and you know, you know, I still know a lot of these guys. We had something in common. We could, we all used our hands and we could work in a gas station or a machine shop or a deli or a, you know, a wood shop because we had mechanical skills and we had dexterity. I said, we, you know, we had that ability that that went with any job, you know, we, you know, we have another fellow on the, on the show with us here, Justin from American, uh, American gas, a hot rod shop. I would work under him tomorrow. You know, the guy's probably, I guess Justin's probably half my age, a little, maybe a little less, but you know what? He knows so much about stuff that I don't. And I would gladly, you know, apprentice under a guy like that. <coughs> but like you said, it's, you know, ego. If you have an ego, you're not going to be able to do that. I know what I don't know, you know. Right. You're smart. Yeah, it's like me. It's like 
if I could go work for a clay modeler, you know, I would work for free. You know, I right. I remember I was working for Fleur at the time down in Inca, North Carolina. And I remember there was a um, Harry Gant shop was up the street and I had a good job. I'm like, I'll, I'll go sweep the floor. Yeah. Literally don't pay me. And I, I mean it, you know, I wasn't one of them more people say, Oh, I go sweep. No, I meant it. I, I mean, right. I would sweep the floor. Just let me learn whatever. And I think people don't understand how valuable that oh, is and, and what our generation really meant by that. Because yeah. we knew the skill, the one or two things we could pick up could be life-changing. Yeah, that's crazy that you say that. Um, I Before selling tools, I was at the, uh, I was uh, a Porsche dealership and I worked on Porsches and so forth. And I was, I was up there in the rankings and I had gotten an offer to go to Champagne Porsche down in Florida for the race team. And the first word out of my mouth was how much you paying me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? And that was it. It was, yeah. it, I was the number two guy. So they were the number three, yeah. but you know, it's not, you know, it was just the age thing and not understanding of putting your time in. You know, they were like, well, you come down here and work. And you work in the dealership, and then on the weekends you're off on the to the track. And I'm like, okay, well, what are you paying for that? And they're <laughs> like, next, you know, yeah. next number. And you know, and then uh, of course, you know, I was, and, and then it clicked until I got older. Then I'm like, well, that was that, that opportunity. Was that yeah, was that chance, you know, that opportunity. And, uh, you know, it's always funny. Of course, you'd always like to go back what you learned when you get older that to redo. But hey, that's just part of life. Hey, at least, Brian, you you know, it. there's a lot of people that can look back. They don't have a clue what they said. You at least can look yeah. back and say, oh, my God. But yeah. most people don't even realize what they said. Yeah. They think so, that's normal. Yeah. And like I said, and there's and there's. You know, there's people that have that drive, like I said, if you know, that can continue on or get that opportunity again. You know, it's hard to get that. It's just like you said, um, I I'd love to work under one of you guys just because of of doing that type of uh stuff to a car or making stuff. And uh, you know, again, of course, when you get older, have kids and responsibilities, it's hard just to walk away from all that. That's the, the sad part about it. Yeah, you're right. You got to catch it when you're young, when you're, when you have the ability to do those things and learn those things before you create the debt or the responsibilities that come with, you know, kids and everything else. So, right. um, but there's a will, there's a way, and you know, it's, uh, it's all in priorities. And, you know, like I said, we were, we were all blessed at an age where we didn't have anything and neither did anybody else. We didn't know we were poor and yeah. just got yeah. to do a job that paid the bills. And I was lucky enough to find one that paid the bills and I still like doing today. Yeah. Right. No, it's absolutely. Yeah, like I said, I get asked all the time. I mean, I miss working on the cars. I just hated the politics and the and the people, you know, that the deal. Me and the car got along great. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the, the, the other side of that that gets kind of uh, uh, tough. Um, but well, you that's, know, again, that's why I'm HR in our place, so we uh, – we don't have to worry about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So uh, you you do the painting, correct? I'm on more of the painting, the body work side. Jim's more, obviously, the assembly, the wiring. Uh-huh. And uh, we, plus the design side, you know, we're all, you know, we're still running everything day to day we still have collision we still have to run the machine shop we still have to run the fab shop right. and but as far as where i like to be seriously i just like the sand man i just i'm a sand man uh -huh. i can just sit there and just zone for hours i love weekends because i don't have anybody to bother me i can just right during the week it's like 
I don't get shit done. And on a weekend, people walk in and think I had 30 elves in there with me because <laughs> I get a lot done. Do you guys, are you uh, on the painting and so forth? Are you like, uh, do you still have a stockpile of, you know, some old enamel stuff? Or are you doing waterborne stuff? Or are you, as, you know, what type of material are you guys using? Yeah, we, we use all glazerate, which is a German paint. Yeah. But but it's a real high end. Um, but we we don't use water. We have water. We have a water bank. And we have, uh -huh. and water looks better with metallics. But honestly... Everything we do is still solvent based because they've never pushed it. You know, there was 10 years ago, everybody's going to be water and the world's going to be water. And um, I've stayed with solvent. We're still lucky enough to use solvent. I don't see where they're going to push us to water and water's changed a lot. Even with glazer, the way you paint, you almost have to be a guy to paint water today that's never painted a car before because it's so not like a guy what they're used to now it's like you paint a fender and then you paint the door then you go to the quarter where now when we paint we're just all the way down the side that's not the way they paint this new water today yeah it's crazy it's like yeah one I, coat just, i have a lot of shops and they were you know, a couple of years ago, they were really pushing and they were, you know, they had to meet these deadlines and they had to have these new booths. And of course, you know, it's all about, you know, not to get there, but, you know, it's all about paying the man. You know, sure. you got to have an inspector Flat and you got to have yeah. this and you got to have that. And then, of course, you got to have somebody that's a state approved to do all that. Sure. You know, it's just one big uh, uh, money pit. But I, it was funny today. I, I ran into one of my shop owners that owned a body shop, and uh, he was down there. And I, and I had asked him. I said, "We walked in the shop, and I was like, why you're not using your your uh, water sprayer? You know, water booth. I, I mean, you put that in like three years ago." He goes, "I'm still waiting for a final inspection." You oh. know, <laughs> it's like, and you know, yeah. the whole time he's like. Dude, the stuff I have is outdated. It's, you know, I, yeah. nobody wants to use it. The guy I had to get just to paint water doesn't even work with me anymore. You know, it's just like a whole. Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah, trying to get everything in line. Yeah, you know, water, you got to have no humidity, you know, a lot of fans. And then guys are like, well, is it really dry? I don't want to clear over if it's not. And um, yeah, I just you get older and you're used to spraying some and they haven't pushed you to, to using it. Even though I have water bank there, uh -huh. don't use it. Just, I have all these paints that's sitting there. That's cost me thousands, but still go back to solvent. And uh, yeah, it's almost as good as the, uh, the state inspector guy that has a set of state. I mean, the inspection tools, and the toolbox never used so that when the trooper comes in, he's like, see, I have them all. And, yeah. you know, they're perfect. And, but, you know, he's over there using something that he's been using for 20 years, you yeah. know, and just beat the crap. But it's it's the game we have to play. But I, I was just curious if you guys had gotten into that realm or, um, uh, you know, that type of flu, you know, stuff, pain or whatever, what you were still yeah, using. We, we, we've done it. We have it. But. I'd be lying to you if I told you we use it. Uh huh. And are you guys like glass mat type uh, fillers or uh, what type of? Uh, yeah, we um, use both. We use both fillers, but I still use Z Grip, which is probably one of the cheaper fillers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I still like it. It's a little thicker. It hangs, you know. Yeah, it's more pinholey, but you know, pinholes come from. You know, you, you don't shake your mud maybe and, um, you know, the oil in the, in the filler, it needs to be, um, a lot of guys just take their filler and don't shake it. You should shake it like you do because the oil is in the bottom, mm -hmm. what I would call oil. And, you know, guys give you a hard time because you mix on cardboard because that's what you're doing is you're sucking that oil out of the filler. 
But the key with, I think a lot of people don't do with filler is they put it on like and leave it right away. Like they put it on filler needs to be worked. Um, and I've kind of just learned that over the years, you kind of, you know, you don't just put it on, even though you got it nice, you kind of got to keep going over it till it starts firming up, not till it starts chunking out on you, but uh -huh. you know, working the air out of it. And, you know, and even though you might have it pretty slick, your first throw, it needs to be worked, you know, and pushed against the metal. And it's just things I've learned over the years with doing body work. You uh -huh. know, it's like, God, I wish I would not. I mean, I used to sand so hard, whether it was clear, Bondo, I would press so hard thinking I got to work so hard. Man, it works a lot better if you let the sandpaper yeah, let the yeah. do. I mean, but it's like, I don't know, being young and dumb, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just leaning into it and think I got to be all muscular. And and it's like, shit, man, I could have saved yeah. myself. So of speaking hours. of sandpaper, are you a Velcro or sticky pad guy? I'm Velcro when it comes to Bondo because sticky pad, there's nothing worse than putting a $3 piece <laughs> on a long board and going like that and seeing that sheet of paper fly off and the son of a bitch won't stick again. And I'm cussing going, that's three fucking dollars that I threw away. But at least Velcro will hold if you really wanted to, you know, because the mud's kind of sticky yeah. and <laughs> throws that paper and then there's dust underneath and it can never put it back on. Yeah. So now that's you know, that's one of that's one of my uh big things about guys moving to different shops because I have some shops that are all sticky and then you have some shops that are all velcro. And of course one guy goes to a shop and he's like Everything I have is for a sticky and I need all Velcro. That's what keeps me in business, you know, yeah, you guys yeah. know everything. And, uh, but that's one of those, uh, I use both. Huh? I use, I use both. Uh, I just yeah. start my mud with uh hook it and then I go to sticky after that. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a hook it guy to start. Oh, that's okay. Like I said, that's usually, uh, that's usually a good conversational part when, when I see a new guy, cause I'll ask him, Hey, so what do you need? You need a Velcro pad or a sticky pad? And he's yeah. like, how did you know? Because you know, <laughs> I like when they try to use the sticky on a Velcro pad. It oh, kind of, yeah. you know, yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. God, it ain't working. No, yeah. it, that throws it across the shop. It's like a uh, odd job and uh, Goldfinger when he throws the, his hat to cut the statue, you know, <laughs> that pad thing goes across the room. So it's yeah. kind of funny. So, so Mike, um, the last time you were on, you were talking about 3D printing taillights. Yep. So I just bought a printer. So I'm, I'm printing some stuff. I'm learning, I'm learning how to play with it. So my question on that is, what, what type of uh, filament do you use for the taillights? Uh, you know, that's a good question because we don't even print our own. Oh. We actually farm out that... Um, you know, we we do have a clear that we've done, and then mm -hmm. I will spray them red and then clear it over. But I'd be lying to you, Lewis, on what they use to print our taillights. Because okay. it's a different type of printer than what we have. And yeah. theirs is a printable red acrylic. And the only thing I do then is polish it, and then I will clear it. But uh, I don't. I don't know what that material is. Yeah, it's a hard, hard. Uh, it's a hard thing to find out because I've talked to a couple of different people. I was like, "Well, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask the Ring Brothers because they, they." Yeah. Do yeah. Yeah, we. You know, we're we have a place called Midwest Prototyping, and they did that for us. Like on the, I don't know if you saw. You know, when I told you I was doing that, that was on uh, Patriarch. If you remember that car, Meryl? we did. And if you look at the tail lights on that, they're a cylinder. And that was when we brought the air in through the quarters and came in around the tail lights. So it came all the way through. And each one of those lights on each side, there's three of them. They were like a triangular cylinder mm -hmm. and they were printed with the grooves inside it. So that when we lit them, 
it was pretty damn cool, you know. So yeah, yeah. Um, I can tell you to print them was about three thousand dollars for uh, the six tail lights. So yeah, it's a specialty printer. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to learn it. I'm like, man, what did they use? <laughs> I mean, the printing world's amazing. Like, I don't know. We have these three thousand dollar steering wheels that we have, and we we have these horn buttons printed in in uh, Michigan they're out of stainless but the detail in that stainless that they print but they also print like for the Cadillac all the switches in a certain Cadillac because they found out that humans can tell as soon as they touch something that's plastic or metal you can instantly tell that oh that's plastic right yeah, cheap yeah cheap so this certain cadillac everything they touch is printed and they do that too so it was just through a customer of ours son who's really bright and started this company and we were lucky enough to have some so azof. what azod azof azof azoth Oh, A Z O T H. Check them out; they're pretty cool and what they do. But yeah, yeah, the printing world is changing by the hour. Yeah, and, changing the uh, world. Yeah, yeah, the machining will probably be obsolete someday because of printing. Yeah, like it's, you said, the the uh, AI and the printing is is, is just taking over everything. It yeah, means, yeah, it's even program. The, you could be the man. Right. It's almost like, you know, now, you, you know, for the machinist for five access, you got to have, you know, you got to have a guy that understands that now you could, it's close to where AI can see something, scan it and write the, the mill program. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's going to eliminate a lot of people's jobs and it's, it's sad in a way. Um, but it's been scary. that's why you got to learn to work with your hands. Yeah. Yep. All these kids and parents that, you know, it's funny. We're all kind of seems the same, you know, oh, we want our kids to go to college because we didn't. Yeah. And it's like, shit, why are, we? when people ask us and we made a good living doing what we do, but we, yeah, we want our kids to go to college. And, well, we don't yeah. want them to work as hard. I told my girls the same thing. You know, you're going to school. You know, I remember my dad was the same way. You know, my dad was like, you're going to school and you're doing this and you're doing that. And I looked at him and said, oh, OK. And of course, I drive right by the college and went right to work, <laughs> you know, <laughs> until, you know, he gets the phone call saying that I hadn't shown up, you know. So, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's difficult because I had a really good customer and a young kid. And smart, man, this guy was really good. You know, he had, he would put any engine from any car and any other car, you know, I mean, he could just, and this was like in his driveway with just, sure. you know, a, a claw it's hammer true. and a screwdriver, you know, I mean, the guy was great. And I, I told him and he was really good mechanic. And I had told him, I said, dude, in five years, you're going to have your own shop. I said, man, you are really good. You're, you, uh, you know, I know that you can do this. And uh, one day I came in to see him and he's like, yeah, I'm moving on. And I'm like, oh, you want to go get your shop? And he goes, nah, I got a job at the county, you know? And I was like, wow. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, I got benefits. I got this. I'm paying. I can still do what I want to do. And I got more time off and I was like, well, I understand, but man, you got all that running around in your head, you know, it's just kind of crazy. And, you know, he makes great money and he has a lot of time to do what he wants. And, you know, it's great, I guess. I guess it just seems like such a shame. You know, we, there was seven of us kids and none of us went to college and, our parents didn't worry about us, you know, at 18, you're out the door and you're on your own and you made your way. And I don't know, it's because people, you know, I'm, I'm really easy to preach to parents about it's 
it's okay for your kids to work with their hands. And then they ask me what I do with my kids and they're all <laughs> went to college, but yeah, you know, sure. it's like shit. But yet the most, I can honestly tell you the most successful people, if you want to, if you want to say success by money are all my high school buddies who didn't go to school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a buddy, my best friend who was a, who was a bridge builder, multimillionaire guy went in when I went in the Navy, I had 1800 bucks to my name or when I went in the Navy, he had 1800 bucks to his name. He bought convenience stores. Now he owns everything, hotels, distributorships. I mean, he's, multi because they were too stupid to know they shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? It's like they did, you know, you go to a bank and they say, Oh, you got to write a business plan. They go business plan. What the, what the, I don't know what yeah. the fuck I'm going to do. I'm just going to figure it out as I go. Yeah. And the most successful people I know are uneducated or too dumb to know they shouldn't do it and are rolling. Yeah. Because they just knew they could do it inside. And somehow we got to teach that to kids that it's okay to just do what's inside you. Yeah. And yeah. parents, I guess that's here. I'm preaching to the choir and I'm a parent who's told right. my kids they had to go to college. Well, like so. you said, as we get older, we, we learn. Yeah. Yep. Well, and you know, and that it's a little abstract, from what you just said, but I just read, you know, now at the $20 minimum minimum wage in California, yeah. businesses are closing already. And it's like, Hey, we're shutting the door. We can't afford to do this. Like now you're out of a job, you know? Uh, yeah. And, I mean, I mean, I, yeah. You pay a guy 20 bucks an hour to do this. That just makes the hamburger $20. So what does your $20 an hour really mean? Nothing. It you know, doesn't, it doesn't, yeah get you anything it's like everything else just went up exponentially and now you the money Lord, just, laid off. yeah it's like the government again uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago uh it was myself and the fellow who who uh, uh the shop, uh, shop owner and one of his young, <laughs> his young employees the guy's in his 20s and we were talking a little bit of politics and he was all gaga and happy and we said what the hell are you so happy about and he says well minimum wage is going up and <laughs> you know, I said, yeah, you know, there was just a piece on TV the other day, a local pizzeria and the shop owner says, you know, I've been employing high school kids and my own kids through the, the years forever. And I, you know, they get a leg up, they move. He says, and, and uh, yeah, you know what? I'm sure they can, they can use the money. I'm glad to see they're going to, they'll get it. He says, but the problem is he goes, pizza is going to be $4 a slice. So now this kid who's sitting there listening to me tell the story says, so I had this look on his face. So what does that mean to me? Like, I said, do you re you don't understand what that means? I said, me and and your boss over here, we can afford four dollars a slice. We can afford twenty dollars a slice. Not that we want to pay it, but we can because we have the money. You have to pay four dollars a slice too. I said, it's for everybody. And he kind of had that aha moment where it was like, ah. Oh. I said, and then there's rent and there's gas and there's all the other expenses that, yeah, we got to pay, but we can afford it. And how are you going to afford it? And then I, his brain just like jumbled. It was like tilt, tilt, tilt. He didn't, know what to think. he didn't know what to think. I said, just go think about that for a while. Think how good it is now. You know? So true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're at uh, the 10 o'clock mark. So I'm going to let a couple guys in because we don't want to hold you too long. Uh, we let a couple guys in. Might want to ask a couple questions. and No worries. Hello. There's Justin. Hey. There's Justin. Right. Coach. Here's the guy I want to be my new boss. <laughs> Let's go work both ways. Good. I can learn a lot from you. Hey, dude, I'll hey, show dude. you whatever I can show you. I will gladly teach you. Can Listen, you? Don't let Ray fool you. Ray is a, a, a book of knowledge. Oh. On a little bit of everything. Yeah. 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 And, it's and, a lot. and he has every book behind that. that <laughs> <character>. <laughs> I do. <Yeah. laughs> I got... Like like that one right there. I keep the important one right next to me, though, Brian. I keep yep. the important one right here. The old Bosch. There you book. go. The old Bosch book. That's, that tells you everything, how everything works. Everything is in there. 
<laughs> yeah. Justin, tell Mike a little bit about your shop, American Gasser, because you guys are continually amaze me with the stuff that you pump out. Top yeah, same, Mike. same kind of thing. We uh, we got a hot rod shop up in Saginaw, Michigan, um, and we do a little bit of everything um, from your simple bolt-ons and performance work and tuning to custom builds, restorations, metal fab, paint body, pretty much everything, any of your classic cars up into your newer performance stuff. You're doing more than we are. Well, and Justin does, you know, he's got a great talent with, you know, custom hand making stainless steel headers. The the work he does on it on these headers is is it's art. It really is art. It's man, it's gorgeous. Well thanks, Ray. Yeah, it's uh, I can never say enough about that, Justin, because no. the work is just superb. Very just superb. There's but, that's one thing about going to SEMA is you, you really get humbled because there's a lot of talented people out there that hadn't got recognition that sure should. And sometimes you feel like, man, you need to move on from us and give the recognition to where it's really deserved today because I just love to see the young guys kicking it. And I'll tell you what, our youngest guys are some of the smartest, brightest guys ones that are young and want to embrace technology and um, have ability are they're gonna roll today you know it, it's funny you just said that I, that makes me think of uh justin nichols yeah, yeah right i mean oh my god he is coming up yeah very talented yeah we uh messed with him down in Chicago, we boy, he's got quite the shop. He, yeah, I was yeah. like, holy shit! I really didn't know him too well. We went to World, uh, was a World of Wheels in Chicago, like a year or so, and we stickered his place up, like his trailers, <laughs> just Ring Brothers, this Ring Brothers. <laughs> that son of a bitch sent somebody from Chicago area up to our shop. Put on our windows under new management, Nichols. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, every one of our trailers, every sign wow. had Nichols on it. It was like, holy shit. But then I sent every one of his employees Ring Brother shirts. So they all wore it one day that they walked in and everybody was wearing a Ring Brother shirt down there. So oh, that's awesome. Good, good fun what a what a nice guy and you're right yeah. humble talented and there's so many people like that in our industry that's just fun to hang hang around and you know acknowledge people that are smarter and better than you and there's a lot of them out there yeah and, and it's sad that a lot of people don't get seen you know yeah it like is here, here in northeastern ohio we have a lot of car builders and, you know, they just bring the cars out on, you know, on uh, coffee coffee and car days. But some of the stuff they bring out is like, man, it's never been seen. I see the same yeah. thing here because I'm a cruise night guy, not a show guy. And, and you know, a lot of these cars are gorgeous looking cars. I mean, maybe not, you know, uh, roads to show class, but uh, but certainly local show and, and mid-level show worthy of, of, uh, of recognition and, Mm -hmm. You know, the guys are just like, they're just kind of like me. They're like, hey, you know, what? kind of did that, been there, done that. I'd rather just take it out and cruise it and just, you know, hang with you guys. Like, that, that's exactly what I want to do. So, yeah. Yeah, all, there's a awesome. lot to be said about the ones that can do that and, and drive them. Because, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those Riddler cars that can't make it out of the show. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not a Riddler car guy, but, uh, I, but. You're right. I mean, for me, it's easy to build them. It's hard to make them run and move at the end. You know what I mean? And reliable. That's the hard part. Yeah. So I love so, that. Uh, go ahead. Oh, no. So, Mike, when you were just talking about, you know, the uh, Riddler guy and so forth, I mean, what's your real opinion on that art of of a custom car bill are, are you are you a guy that would like to see somebody drive and enjoy it or do you want somebody that keeps it in their living room and you know has a beer next to it and then just stare at it i mean are you I mean, I where, mean, what's your feeling on that i mean i think 
to each his own. I, I for people that want to spend two million to get a twenty thousand dollar trophy or cash or whatever, that's that's to them. That's their goal. That's it keeps other shops going, and if they they enjoy it. For me, I I, I guess I always look at the amount of money as what it means to me. Like that's a shit pile of money. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I can't afford what we build, but. I'd rather put money where I can see or know it's going to handle or um, in a different way than underneath a car. You know what I mean? I've just not been one to want to look at the bottom of a car. I mean, we've done nice, but nothing like Riddler cars. But to me, it's a waste. But I'm not the God or telling you that's what – it's just my opinion. I right. mean – Right. Yeah, I personally would rather have you put money where you can see it. I think interior probably would probably be the, if I was going to take the money from the bottom, I'd throw it in the interior because I think that's probably where everybody skimps out at because usually everybody's out of money, out of time, and they send it to the interior shop and let them finish it. And looks like a street rod interior in a totally radical muscle car, and it's missed. So, for me, I'd rather take the money and put it in an area I can touch, see it every day, instead mm -hmm. of have to put it on a hoist. Yeah. So, I was dealing with a good interior guy that was going to do some custom seats for me. It never, the project never happened, but he said to me, The problem is being an interior guy. I'm always the last guy on the list. It's out of money. You know, but it makes sense because you're not going to put an interior in a car and then start doing body work. I mean, that's crazy. You know, and you're not going to be doing heavy mechanical when you have a nice buff colored interior. So it kind of makes sense. That's like putting a carpet in the house, you know, after the walls are done. But he's right because people are always out of money and they want to know, oh, my God, why is it so expensive? Why is it going to take so long? Why is it so expensive? And uh, And – and what's expensive? They spent forty on a chassis, sixty on a motor, yeah, thirty on a tranny with the with the you know what I mean. And then they get the well, interior guy and want him to do it for twenty grand. Yeah, well, that's it. By the time they get to that, it's like there's <laughs> it's nothing like, left. Yeah, <laughs> they spent. You know, it's like I don't get it. And that's why most guys look their head in a car and go, "Yep, seen it, seen it." And uh, I actually so, told a couple of friends of mine that were doing projects a while ago and I, and they were they didn't have the money that they had the forethought to see to kind of map it out but they knew man i'm not going to be able to finish this i don't have all the money so i said you know what you do get the mechanicals done do what you can do do the underside do the suspension get the running gear dialed in put an interior in the car and don't paint it drive yeah. it in prime you know i mean and i did that. i drove my own car in prime for six years and loved it absolutely loved it after it got painted buddy at the shop says hey i noticed you're not driving your car much anymore you used to take it out a lot why is that and i just, yeah. just it's because it's painted right i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. enjoyed it more <laughs> it's been primer yeah <laughs> so we got a project like that we're gonna yeah. we're doing a 40 willies gasser that's the same be like we're gonna finish the metal work get it mechanically done run and driving and seal it he's taking it that's it that's awesome yeah we, like i said it's kind of the same thing like you know, starting to yeah well hopefully yeah. starting to run out of a little bit of money you know just kind of getting towards well we're getting tight so like let's just get it on the road again sure and, like this thing started as a roof like that's basically it wow and so i mean he had obviously a lot of money into it but at least he'll be able to drive it right yeah and he's gonna love it Brian, that's yeah, like what he, I always tell you with the Mustang, you know, yeah. just get it out on the road. Who cares what it looks like? It, it's a gem to you. Who gives a shit what anybody else thinks? You're going to smile. You're going to have smiles per mile that you can't even calculate. Uh, I know. It's a mistake. I kick my, I walk by and see my car and I took that thing apart 30 years ago and it's <laughs> a shell. There's nothing in it. And the funny thing is when I was working on it or starting, I kept taking stuff off of it. I would find something to take <laughs> off, and I'm like, dummy, put it back on. Don't worry about it. I'm still taking stuff off I'll, of it. I'll be busting your chops regularly because this Saturday we're going, to, we're going to Hoboken, New Jersey with the flatbed and picking up that Mustang project, the 66 that I'm going to – the next one I'm going to be working on. So I'll be back in Mustang heaven again. So 
I'll be busting your chops weekly. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, like <laughs> I said, yeah. hopefully it'll get me going. Yeah, like, I hope so. We told uh, Brian that all the fellas will get together and drive down there and, and help him put it back together. Yeah, but he won't yeah buddy. I, yeah, I got to make the room for you guys. <laughs> hey, I got a bus. We all sleep in the bus. <laughs> you better check with your wife first. Yeah, right. Hey, hey I'm, the boss. I'm the boss when she ain't home. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you better talk with my wife. But my wife says all the time, just put it together. Just put it together. That's all I hear. Oh, Stop talking. Sounds like we just have permission. Right. Yeah, that sounds like permission. I agree. Sure yeah. does. <laughs> we'll gang up. Everybody bring a hammer and a duct tape. We're, we'll get it together. That's it. We're, we're our own worst enemies most of the time because we second, third, and fourth think it and want to make it perfect. And and my goal now is like, don't make it perfect. Just make it workable. And yeah. perfect, can come, perfect may never come. You know what? Like, I'm still changing my car. And guys are saying, what are you doing? Car's done. It's not done. Car's never done. Never no. done. Never done. Yeah. No. I'm going to change the carpet. I want a different color now. I'm going to put a gold carpet in the car. I'm like, screw it. What's going to take me two hundred dollars and in an afternoon? Big deal. Yeah. I want the black one in. Yeah. I'll take it back. And, what's enjoy. Isaac doing? What's Isaac doing with that? Is that a sixteen eight, or a eighteen in the background there? That, what is that? Yeah, that, that's actually a uh, SU SU twenty seven. Oh, a, a Russian. Um, Russian. Yeah, it's Suter. a it's a, a spy in the group. Yeah, it's a. Yeah. Uh, you gotta roughly, watch it. It's a GI Joe size, a three quarter GI Joe, so roughly a one eighteen scale. I have so what I have an uh, Apache helicopter above my head and an F fourteen right there. What's with the Russian suitor? Is it a what is that a suitor? Su what is it? Su Sukhoi. Sukhoi. Yeah, um, it was. I have an F twenty two somewhere. It was for the other planes to fight. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's just the one that ended up in camera view. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, the Russians got some cool planes, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I you, we were talking. You said uh, the permission for Brian. I missed my window of permission on the on the Chevelle. My wife Chevelle. She about a year and a half, two years ago. She said, "Hey, I want you to start putting it together. Start getting everything. Start putting it together." And I said, all right, why? Well, okay, let me get a list. It's going to do that. It's going to take this. It's going to take. And then I spent too much time doing that. That when I said, are you serious? Can I? And she goes, no, not now. Uh, we, got, <laughs> we, 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 we put solar on the roof. We got to pay the solar. Sorry, we gonna... no clothes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you weren't you supposed to... to say anything. Right. Well, when I, well when, I, when I thought back, I was like, wait a minute. Why was I questioning? That was a window... Oh, I had the permission window. Yep. You had the green light, buddy. Yes. Yeah. You got to jump. Think. Don't think. Just do. I told you. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so what do you, what do you think? Like, like my Mustang, I have a 66 fastback. Okay. And I had bought, I got all the stuff to put the uh, rack and pinion, you know, do the uh, shock tower delete and all that stuff. But I stand there and say, I get ready to cut and say, I can't cut it. And I keep going back and forth. Should I just put it back? Stop. Cause now when I go look at them, they're all cut up. I mean, I, I just go back and forth and, and that's like I said, like Ray says, I overthink this and uh, I'm like, maybe I should just put it back stock. Cause nobody has them stock anymore. They're all cut up now. You know, Brian, what I told you, I have a friend, Honda John, and we help each other work on each other's stuff. And, and it's always the best. Because I've had him over here, and I was pulling back on doing something, you know, making that move. And he's like, give me the saw. I'm like, why? He goes, I'll cut it. And I'm like, why are you so anxious? We're just talking about it. He goes, it ain't my car. It's your, you know, and I've done it his house. I'm like, give me that damn drill. I said, well, I'm, I'm just going right at it, dude. He's like, no, no, no. We got to think about it. I'm like, no, no. We thought about it. I know what we got to do. We just have to cut this. So someone else has to do it sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. If you well, if I come over there, we'll slice them out. Yeah, we'll slice. Them. Well, here's here's where we get trapped into thinking that, oh, should I cut it? Will it take the value away, or should it, or should I leave it? Or you go back and forth, but all this time you're missing the joy of having the vehicle. Yes, for you driving. Yes, right. 
Well, that's what my thought was. My last thought that I told Brian a while ago was leave the shock towers in, leave the stock stock suspension, get the engine tranny in and drive it. If you if you hate it so much, you can always change it later. It's a yeah. weekend project. You know, yeah. You can do it later. Like but if it was me, I mean, I'm just throwing my two cents out there. I would never put a Mustang two in that car anymore with the technology today. You know what I mean? So if you're telling me you got a Mustang two front suspension, no freaking way would I cut that stock car out of it. If I had a Detroit Speed cradle to put in it or or Roadster Shop chassis, I'd do it. But if I was if I just had a Chris Alston stuff or um, even like regular the, Mustang the TDI TV. or whatever it is. Yeah. There's no way I'd cut my stock out for that. Brian, I don't know if you saw Kiwi's latest video, but he brought in Yeah, the sixty six the sixty five another the, Mustang, a nice yep. silver Mustang. And he drove it and he said the problem is they put a rack in it and it's like notchy at at the twelve o'clock position. You gotta like fight past the notch and it's hard to drive. He goes, I'm yeah. I wanted to take this thing out. So I was wondering if you were aware of that, because if not, I was going to send you the video. Yeah, no, I saw that. And uh, like I said, I've seen I've seen some that are, look really beautiful. And then I've seen some that, like you said, the guy's uh, hair off. And when they, they weld it all up, they're wrong. And well, he was saying got to deal the with it. The Borgensen coming out of the firewall, that extreme angle going down is where the notch comes in. I know you guys, Mike, have done a few of those Mustangs. And like I said, what type of suspension or what did you change over to? You know, I've, uh, you know, I started looking. Of course, you know, I've already bought the stuff, but you can always get rid of it. And yeah, I, know, I, mean, I was thinking if, like, if, you, if, I, like if, if I had that, honestly, I, I wouldn't. The, there's too much stuff out there that's so much better. But I'll tell you what. When my wife and I moved to Wisconsin, I had a 66 Fastback car. I've always wanted. My brother and I are huge, excuse me, Mustang fans. I built it in our garage in Nashville before I moved up with my brother. It's all I did was put a power steering rack in it, you know, which I use it as non-power. Mm -hmm. And I put the Shelby arm on it, you know, drilled out the upper control arms that car drove so much fun. Left the leaf springs in it. Put it. Still got a two ninety five in the rear. Um, made it look like a clone. I remember I even put, uh, God, uh, Edelblock had it on there. The Fun Team. I oh, put yeah. the Fun Team on it. You know, back in the day, and that car drove amazingly well. Yeah. And it was stock suspension with a power steering rack which is quicker than the regular manual rack. Unless you're going to spend the money on a DSC subframe, you know, quadrilink in the back and all that. Those car, you know, I put reverse springs in the rear. You know, it was, it was, you know, not a lot of money, but man, that car, it was fun and it was easy and you could do it in no time. Like you said, put a five speed in it. You don't have to cut your tunnel out of it. it Versus a six speed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep with a Windsor based push rod motor. I mean, there's a lot of fun you can have without going crazy. You know, you put a coyote in it with a six speed, there goes your floors, there goes, <laughs> you know, everything. Yeah. There goes yeah. months and year of work. So, you know, enjoy the car. Yeah. No, I, no, I, 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 you know, like I said, I keep going back, but I, I, I think I know that I can't cut it, so I don't. Well, there, there's your answer. There you go. Yeah, there's you your know. answer. Then you put drop spindles on it. Yeah. yeah, it's easy. Easy in here. You can still fit the LS in it. I mean, you no. yeah. 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 don't do that. Don't make me drive <laughs> out there, Coach. Don't make <laughs> me drive <laughs> out and see you. Okay. I've done I'll, that. I'll say, I'll say I've more. Done you're that. gonna Them come haters. They don't like that. I want to visit. <laughs> it's all right you can push my buttons it's okay yeah. so no i know i really appreciate it, mike like i said i know you guys have done a lot of those you know customs or you know put the stuff on and part of me is like yeah you want the neat stuff but then i'm like man i don't want to sell my house 
Yeah, well, it's not even to sell a house. It's just like you cut it all up, and it's like, man, is this car? I, I hate to say the value of it, but mine's kind of rare. I mean, I had the, I had an A motor. I mean, it's a factory A motor car, and it's a two twenty five horsepower car, and it had pony interior, and it's the dark metallic blue. I mean, it was something only like 4,200 of mine made out of the 100,000 fastbacks, you know? So uh, I kind of keep going back saying I really don't want to cut it up. But. He sounds like a Mopar guy now. <laughs> yeah, right. It's one, it's one and one, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, I, don't, I won't go that far, but <laughs> when you, when you well, got a pretty low number like that, yeah. especially when they made two million of them, so. yeah, yeah. You know, we all have our stuff, and like what I did with, with my car, my my thing was because I wasn't building a show car, I wanted to reuse as many of the original parts as I could instead of using the aftermarket. So if it was polishable and cleanable and re and presentable, yeah, it went back on the car instead of buying an aftermarket piece of unknown quality, you know, or unknown longevity. That was just my thing because I've seen so many cars, <coughs> you know, Dynacorn body, great motor, everything out of a catalog, and it said, yo, it's a, it's a '69 come out. They re they they use the old badge like. Dude, it's just it's a recreation of a 69 Camaro. It's not your old 69 Camaro, not right. by a long stretch. And um, you know, but at a car show, you don't know. And these cars are competing it could be competing against you with an original car, and you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and you get blown away by the guy that has the, the marked advantage. So I said, you know what? I, I'm keeping it real. It is what it is, and that's all that's all it's ever gonna be, and that's yeah. it. Well, yeah. right. that was enjoy it. Bar. Yep. Yeah. Well, the big thing, too, as far as the value is driving it and enjoying it. That's where the value is. That's that's the biggest value. Yeah. Right. And driving it. Yeah, Brian, you can sit and talk about it till I come on again in another two, three years. And, <laughs> yeah, no, I hope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get at it. Yeah. Uh, no, I, uh, no pretty, I, I'm working pretty towards. Pretty soon there's nothing left of it rusted in the. How many times you hear that when you want to buy a car that's in somebody's yard that oh yeah, yeah. no i'm gonna get to it 30 yeah, years yeah. later it's gone right. then the guy dies and yeah pulls and it out and it's like you know the body you know, left. well yeah. the funny part was before uh i got married and bought the house i knew i was gonna be house poor so i put floors and quarters and everything on it so it's been sitting uh, it's been inside, so that's, that's it's been big, sitting in an air conditioned garage or yeah. climate control garage for the last. So now years. you're gonna have to do that again. New quarters, yeah. new floors. Nah, they're still good. They're yeah. clean. <laughs> they're no, clean. Advantage, just getting it inside. Yeah, without yeah. a doubt. But it's like not. Said, it's not like my my uh, international scout that's been sitting underneath the deck <laughs> for thirty years. Oh yeah. That's a that's a rust pile there. Yeah. I'm afraid it's to open the door up on that. So how many like people have come here. by to try to buy that from you, and you said, "No, I'm going to fix it up." Uh, I never told my right after fix my it. Mustang. See, they asked the wrong person. If you asked my <laughs> wife, it would have been gone in a heartbeat. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, tell them it's going to be the doghouse. Yeah, my thought is still, you know, you get the cars, you get it, get it to be a roller, and once you can push it around and roll it, it's a whole other animal. Now it takes on a whole other. It's it's just one of those monumental leaps, you know. Yeah. Um, and then then things start happening, and you know, you don't need a seat. Put a milk crate in it and take it for a drive. Who cares? Yeah. Vice grips for a steering wheel, like we used to do. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Use two pair. Make it a hill hillbilly. There you go. <laughs> so when let me tell you a story. When I took the bus over to Tyler's shop to cut the roof off, we we're going to lift the roof. So he looks in the window. He says, "Where's your seat at?" I was sitting on a fold up chair. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, "Hey, I got here!" Right, right. <laughs> Please didn't catch me. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I had a, a shop owner. He had bought a samurai. Yeah, one of those uh, little trucks, you know, Suzuki's, yeah, Suzuki samurais. And uh, he goes, "Yeah, I found this. Uh, it was sitting on a farm, and the guy, you know, used it around the farm, and he had his grandkids driving the, this thing around, and so forth." And I went over and looked at it, and they had taken plastic lawn chairs, and that's what the seats were. And he had zip tied the seats 
he drilled holes in it and then zip tie, and that's what was holding the seats in. And I'm like, holy! And he's driving around trying to find seats for this, uh, you know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've seen it all now, you know. But he used zip ties on, though. So. Yeah, he did yeah, use zip ties. Zip ties. Yeah, I don't know what they were the. They were the- Three quarter. Yeah, that's the big one. Yeah, yeah, they're strong ones. I want to kind of, I want to kind of crash rating to hold the seat in when you had to stop right. the brake or whatever. Probably Remember? better than the, probably better than the rust that was holding that yeah. camera yeah. together. Got look at the. They, I got a, I got a good one for you. Um, I had a, I had a ninety. Uh, Buick Riviera. So I went out one night, went to the club, came out, it was gone. I was like, oh, they stole my car, right? So the cops called me and said, hey, we found your car. It's down at the tow place. You can come get it. So I go down there. The doors are gone. The seats are gone. The hood is gone. The trunk lid is gone. <laughs> so, so I think I was still da- I was dating my wife. And I was like, well, I'm taking it home. I'm driving it. So I threw a milk crate in, and I'm driving up the street. And a cop rides by me. He looks at me. He just shook his head and kept on going. <laughs> Rolling up the street with no doors, no nothing. That's all hey, I think the guys have taken that to the new chargers. You see, they're doing that oh, with the yeah. chargers. Yeah. They're driving oh, yeah. them with no doors on them and no deck wood yeah. and hood. What the hell? Yeah. When the first time I had my Mustang painted, I had to go to the guy's shop and I had stripped it in my, my parents' garage. No windshield, no, you know, no headlights, no nothing. And he gave me, I didn't know where the shop really was. So he's giving me these directions. Of course, this is all before cell phones and Google map and all that stuff. And I'm driving along and it's an early Sunday morning. And I take this turn and I go right into the police station. There's all these cops walking out. Here comes this car, has no exhaust. It's like missing no glass, no chrome, no nothing. And I just kind of drive by and wave to them. And they're all like looking like, okay. And kept on going and and then I found I should have made a left instead of a right, you know, yeah. and I showed up and I said, dude, I went to that police station back there. And he goes like this. And I was like, yeah, he goes, <laughs> they just looked at me like, what the heck? You know, so That's that was funny. pretty oh, good. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, we've done that a couple of times. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, I got to jump ship because I have to be an adult in the morning and go to work. There you go. Me so too, buddy. Overrated. All Mike, right, overrated. You're, you're always welcome here anytime you want to come on and. Just hang out with us. You're always welcome. And well, I appreciate it, guys. It was fun again. It was, it was fun, awesome. Mike. Appreciate everything, Mike. Man. Yeah, Lewis, yeah. I gotta, it's... I gotta remind you, Lewis. I'm not going to be here next week. So I'm going to be at my daughter's wedding in North Carolina. Wow. Good for you. So, I'll be. Well, down I got one Thursday. daughter, and hopefully she'll get married pretty soon too. So. Yeah. But uh, Jim and I are lucky enough to go to Australia in a couple weeks uh, for oh, a show cool. over there. So. What part yeah, of Australia? Well, I'm sorry. What part of Australia? Uh, on, what? Melbourne. 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 I have cousins yeah. in uh, Perth. Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Perth, and but we're gonna really spend time in New Zealand. Mm. So nice. somebody's That's looking cool. to build for half of it, so I'm pretty pretty excited. So nice. That's good. <laughs> yeah, That's trip. awesome. Yeah, that would be so much fun. We have QA1 coming on next week. So Awesome. Who's coming oh, on? Man. I'm using their parts, too. Okay. Look at that. Oh, you know, it's funny, cause, real quick, but um, the QA1 owner is from Spring Green, town I'm in. Oh, oh yeah? Wow. Town. He married the daughter nice. of QA1. So, uh, yeah, you'll have to say, oh, you know, the Ring Boys, they're, they're yeah. in the same town. So, <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. Yeah. Cool it's it's uh they're great people so yeah, yeah. casey um yeah. we see her all at all the shows so i talked to her into coming on awesome well say hi from the ring brothers i sure will and we appreciate you we gotta we get you back on when your brother's in town yeah ah uh, screw him i'm the <laughs> one. We have enough fun yeah, yeah he's missing out that's right it's good <laughs> seeing you guys again yeah, right, appreciate it. Like, enjoy talking. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you guys. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, Later. Take care. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, I knew, now I knew how to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. Leave, leave screen. <laughs>